give him all your praise and worship to him today. The same way you did yesterday, the same way you did the day before, the same way we do every day, just give him all your praise and worship today. Think of all the things he's done for you in the past, what he's doing for you now, what he's going to do for you later. Thank you, Lord. We come to you today, Lord, humbly, in your presence today, asking for oh, whatever your will be today, Lord. We pray that you fill this room with the Holy Spirit and move like a mighty rushing wind. You break chains. You open the eyes of the blind. You make the lame to walk today. Rise them out of the grave today, Lord. We put all of our trust and faith into you. Mm. We put all of it in your hands, Lord. And we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Are you seated? Uh, you're stuck with me today. <laughs> That's a good stuff. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. Um, I had a pretty, pretty good sermon, okay? Hey? Yeah. I think it was too good. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to be honest. I'm just going to be honest. But, um, you can't really preach what you're not practicing. So, um, and God let me know about that for sure. Uh, I'm in the process of quitting smoking right now. Um, <laughs> uh, and guess what? My, that, that sermon I'm talking about is over obedience. <laughs> and uh, I was not obedient at the time. So, uh, anyways, it's okay though. Uh, he, he put other things on my heart and I don't know if somebody in this room needs to hear it or I need to hear it, but he, uh, it's pretty powerful today and I, I wanted to talk about rejection. I don't know if, uh, this, this world has a way of rejecting the good out of it. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it, but you could, I've seen it time and time again growing up. You could be the best person you could be and you would still get rejected. Um, but after I read the gospels and seen that Jesus didn't do nothing to nobody, he still got rejected. It makes sense. But anyways, I, I wanted to start uh, talking about rejection in uh, 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 16. Let's go to 16. I know, I know. I, th I feel like every time I'm coming up here, I'm talking about David. <laughs> me and David, we're, we're close, all right? We're, me and David are close. We, I, I don't know what it is about it. I always get draw toward David and his story. And uh, before I start, there's so much wrong with this world. <laughs> I just wanted to uh, say that first and foremost because w everybody is driving or basing their self-worth on what other people are, are uh, saying about them or think about them, um, which is totally wrong. <laughs> if you are basing your self-worth on other people's thoughts, you will always be or feel rejected. Um, I feel like I've learned that from a long time ago, uh, but I still catch myself even worried about saying the wrong things, of hurting people's feelings, or not even the wrong things, Saying what I feel, because I don't want to think of, uh, you know, I don't want to be seen that way towards other people 
or, um, anyways. But uh, <laughs> everybody wants to feel accepted. Uh, it's just, it's just in our DNA. It's just in our, in our blood. Um, I remember back in. I'm sure everybody went through junior high or elementary trying to be in the cool kids group and couldn't be in the cool kids group because you didn't have the right shoes or you didn't have the right shirt and uh, and just feeling rejected, feeling like you're not even worse. You know, why am I even here if I can't even be in the cool kids group? You know what I mean? So uh, just remember when it feels like everybody everybody's pushing you away, God is pulling you in. I mean, I, when I was uh, writing all this down, I was thinking about a bow, you know, how, you know, he sets you. But not only does the arrow go back, this other arm is pushing. This arm is pushing, this arm is pulling. So when people are pushing you away, God's pulling you in. And that's setting you up, you know, to... <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah it was the the pressure of the pushing and pulling anyways you have purpose i want to do it's first samuel 16 starting in five he said in in peace i have come to sacrifice to the lord this is samuel Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. He also consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. Six, when they entered, he looked to Eliab, Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For God sees not as man sees, but for man... Or for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Then Jesus called Abinadab, <laughs> Ab Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, the Lord had not chosen this one either. Next, Jesse made Shammah pass by. And he said, the Lord has not chosen this one either. Thus, Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel but Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, are these all the children? And he said, there remains yet the youngest. And behold, he is tending to the sheep. Then Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him for we will not sit down till he comes here. So, um, in a way, uh, David kind of got rejected. In a way, David, they kind of thought David wasn't even important enough to even be invited. You're not even going to get looked at. <laughs> um, You're yeah, yeah. But he, it's not like he was, uh, he was over there sulking or anything. He was doing what God wanted him to do. And he was tending the sheep. He was out in the field. He was doing what God wanted him to do putting him into a position where he could use what he's uh, learning to do. Um, I, have write, I have written written down, it's time to stop listening to the devil when he says, you're worthless, nobody loves you, there's no reason for your life because God put a purpose in you and on you <laughs> that that should drive you to get up every day and say, I'm going to beat today's butt. That, I mean, that's just me, but um, <laughs> oh, where do I even begin? Um, so, so Jesse had seven sons pass for Samuel and the Lord kept Telling Samuel, no, not this one, not this one, not this one, not this one. And uh, Jesse said, you know, David's out there in the field tending to the flock. 
He wasn't even invited. That's that's the biggest thing. I don't I don't understand. <laughs> like not even just because he's the youngest. I feel like the there was such a purpose on his life that he didn't even need to be associated with these other guys. Like he is so set apart that we should be. He couldn't even be around the other the other brothers. The other brothers. Um, so, I uh, I wanted to switch or flip over to Jeremiah one five. Y'all probably know this. I should know this by heart, but I still have to read it. But Jeremiah one five. Says before I formed you in the womb. I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I only had to finish that. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. I mean, how lucky are we? And I feel like that is even before the sperm met the egg. Like, before, if you want to get really biological in it, before you were probably even a sperm, you know? God formed you, knew you, yes. put the purpose that he already had in your life before I became a 29-year-old worship leader. He knew what he was going to do with me before I was even formed. Hmm. God gave you a purpose before any of that happened. So anyways, I had to switch over that because it's, it's even more than just scratching the surface because you were not even thought of. I, I say that all the time uh, at work, but before I was even thought of by my parents, I was being thought of by God. So I wanted to switch back over to 1 Samuel because I'm not done with David over here. Um, going to 1731, I think, yeah. So, everybody knows the story of David and Goliath. But in 31, it says, when the words which David spoke were heard, they told, they told them to Saul and he sent for him. Hold up, hold up. Let's back up. Sorry, I got ahead of ahead of myself. Right before that, in twenty eight. Now Eliab, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger burned against David, and he said, "Why have you come down? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? <laughs> are you? What are you doing, dude? Your your purpose is to tend to those sheep." What are you doing down here? There's, and going on, I know your insolence and the wickedness of your heart, for you have come down in order to see the battle. But David said, what have I done now? Was it not a question? And then he turned away from him to another and said the same thing, and the people answered the same thing as before. When I read that, I wasn't mad for David that the his brother was questioning him, I was so uplifted that David didn't even have a second thought when his brother said something. He turned on to the next person and asked him the same thing. God was putting a purpose into his heart. God was telling him to do this, that not even his brother, that I'm sure if y'all have brothers, I'm sure y'all have the thoughts, you know, if you had older brothers, I don't, I have older sisters, but I, I worry about what they think of me, you know? If I asked them a question and they said I was done for it, I'm not going to ask that question again, okay? But David asked the question and pretty much he said, what are you doing down here, you know? He still turned and, and asked the next person in line the same question. He didn't care about what people thought of him, not even his own brothers. He did what God was telling him to do. Whew. So to backtrack, God had a purpose for David. 
when Samuel asked for Jesse's son, even though David was uh, not even invited, God had already chose him and was preparing him for what was to come. Um, and then go back a few few pages. First Samuel sixteen fourteen. I know we're just in these little two two pages, but so fourteen says now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord terrorized him. Fifteen Saul's servants then said to him, Behold, now an evil spirit from God is terrorizing you. Let our Lord now command your servants who are before you. Let them seek a man who is skillful. A skillful player on the harp, and it shall come about when the evil spirit from God is on you, that he shall play the harp with his hand, and you will be well. Mm. So Saul said to his servants, provide for me now a man who can play well and bring him to me. I'm just going to keep going. 18. Then one of the young men said, behold, I have seen a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is a skillful musician, a mighty man of valor, valor, a warrior, one prudent in speech, and a handsome man, and the Lord is with him. Hmm. I'm sure God, uh, God put that in motion too, right? I mean, he was playing. I'm sure he was playing the harp when he was five years old or something. Knowing God, knowing that. Saul was going to send out somebody who was wanting to play the harp or needed to play the harp. Oh, man. So, in retrospect, rejection could be a gift. Actually, what I wrote down is Rejection is the training ground for your purpose. Um, I don't, I don't have it. I should have wrote it down. But it also says that David, while he was tending the sheep, had to fight off lions and bears. Am I right? Lions and bears were coming at the sheep, and he was having to fight for them. So when he was being rejected, not even thought of, of becoming the next king, God was training him for what he was going to have to do in a couple of years and fight a 10 foot, 11 foot Philistine <laughs> that is probably 10 times stronger than a lion or a bear. Everybody thinks of uh, <laughs> we always love to quote Psalm 23. Does anybody know Psalm 23? What does it say? The Lord is my shepherd. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. No, 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 no. No, I, I, always, I always think of that too, but I always cut it off. And I never read five. I don't know if y'all remember verse five of that. You prepare a table before me. In the presence of my enemies. Now who, who's going to go out and sit down with your enemies to eat? I always, uh, I always thought of mom when uh, I think of your enemies could push you. Or, you know, doubt could be the motivation of what you can do in your life. Enemies, everybody wants to befriend the enemies. That's what I've been seeing here lately in the real world or world or whatever. They want to befriend the enemies. That way, I don't want any enemies. You know, I don't want anybody coming against me. God said, I'm going to put a table before the presence of, my, of your enemies. The enemies are going to be your audience. <laughs> like, like, right? He's going to... You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. It's just, it's just amazing. 
I had one more scripture. I know, <laughs> I know this ain't a long and and thoughtful, you know, oh, he's going to make me go home and think about this one. This is straight. I'm just going to tell you, in the waiting that God is putting you through, he's going to prepare you for something, something you're going to have to do. I'm just going to let you know that. Who knows what it is? I don't know what it is. But you can't, there's, there's a difference between waiting and waiting. Like a waiter at a restaurant, he's not just sitting over there waiting for the food to come out. He's going over there making sure the drinks are filled up. He's going over there making sure, you know, the, the appetizer plates, if they're done, they're taking them. He's not over there just sitting on his butt waiting on the food to come out. So there's a difference in waiting and waiting on God. I wanted to go over... To Timothy, Second Timothy, Second Timothy one seven. You got that? For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. Anyways, <laughs> I know. Second <laughs> Timothy four fifteen. situation not in a other people have had it a lot worse than me I can promise you that I'm not comparing anything I've felt rejection and I've felt all alone I've felt like everybody's deserted me but we're not alone <laughs> we're not the only people that have felt this <coughs> and actually it teaches about it in the Bible in 15 it says be on guard against him yourself for he vigorously opposed our teaching at my first defense, this is Paul, at my first defense, no one supported me, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me so that through me the proclamation might be fully accomplished and that all the Gentiles might hear and I was rescued out of the lion's mouth. So when he was, when he was, he was down and out, he thought everybody deserted him. He wasn't looking side to side looking for more people. He looked up yes. and he found a God that never left him. Oh, man. He found a God that never left him. And that's what we need to do. When we feel rejected, when we feel all alone, when we feel like nobody's there, we just got to look up. He says he will never leave us nor forsake us. He's not just saying that just to say it. He means what he says and he says what he means so I, like I said I don't know who needed to hear this maybe I needed to hear it you're never alone you're never <laughs> forsaken the world is upside down <laughs> good is bad bad is good yes. right is wrong wrong is right yes. um but there's something we can do about it and stand firm in what the word says. What the word says about what you're going through in your life. And it ain't new. Whatever you're going through in life, it ain't new. People 5,000 years ago went through the same things and they wrote it down in the Bible and told you how to get through it. All you got to do is read the Bible, read the word. And it will come to life. I'm not kidding. It's not just words on a paper. This is life. Hmm. And 2 Timothy 4, 7. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. That's the end goal. That is the end goal. Fight the good fight. Keep the faith. When everybody around you says you're wrong. When everybody around you says you're going the wrong way. That's when you know you're going the right way. When you're going the opposite of everybody else in the world. When you, yeah. So I, I wrote down that you'll have two choices 
when you feel rejected or feel left out, you can get better from it or you can get bitter from it. And when you start looking side to side, looking whoever's going to be on my back, oh, I need some friends, you're probably going to get bitter from it because you're not going to find nobody. Nobody likes to hang around a loser. Uh, that's just what it is. The world, the world does not want to hang around somebody who's by themselves. That's just how it is. But if you look up, <laughs> you look up, he's always with you. Yes. Never forsake you, never leave you. He knew you before you were even formed. You have a purpose and he's giving you the boldness to go out and do the purpose that he set in your heart. There's, a, there's always a reason. <laughs> the one thing that I, I got learned when I was young was there's a, always a reason for everything. There's a reason y'all came to church today. There's a reason... There's a reason why I preached on rejection today. I don't know what that reason is. But we will find out soon enough. There's a reason God is making you wait in, in the fields tending to the sheep. There's a reason why he sent lions and bears so you can fight it off. Because in a couple years you're going to have to fight a 10 foot giant. Amen. <laughs> There's a reason for it. So you, let's just not wait on the Lord. Let's actually wait and, and do what he's calling you to do. So that's all I've got today. Um, if you're ever feeling down and out, go talk to David. Because <laughs> he's been there too. I swear, uh, every time that I'm feeling down and out or having a problem with a situation, I turn over and read David and Goliath. Everybody knows about David and Goliath. People who probably have never read scripture know about David and Goliath. Um, but it still touches you in a way that you can't be touched by nothing else. You're down and out. You are, if I had to guess, David was just tall. <laughs> I, if I had to guess, and I bet you Goliath's head was through the roof. It didn't stop him. It didn't stop him, because guess what? He wasn't looking around looking for his brothers to back him up. He was looking up. He was looking up, and he had the Lord God at his side. So, yeah. So, anyways, that's what I wanted to share today. Uh, do you want me to pray us out, or okay? Did it, let's all stand. Hopefully, y'all got as much as out of it out of that sermon that I did, because it man, it got me fired up. It made me want to go out and tell people about Jesus. So. Also, there's another person who got rejected, Jesus, and it didn't stop him from his purpose. So let's all bow our heads. Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you for being the cornerstone that we need, for being the start and the finish, the alpha and the omega, Lord. Oh, thank you for paving the way for the lost and the lonely, for the people who don't, just don't feel like they fit in this world. Thank you for never leaving us nor forsaking us. Thank you. <laughs> we can't say thank you enough for everything you've done, everything you're doing, everything you're going to do, Lord. We pray that you give us the boldness today to walk up to Goliath and just smack him with a stone right in the forehead, Lord. We pray that anything that comes against us, we will not look at it as an obstacle, but an opportunity to show your glory, to give you the praise and worship for whatever you take us through, Lord. We pray that you take us to the deepest water <laughs> and show us how to walk on water, Lord. We pray when we walk out of these doors, we are not the same people anymore. We have a new spirit. We have a new purpose. We have a new call on our life. We have a new name. We are not sleeping no more. We are not blind. <clears throat> because who 
The sun sets free, is free indeed. And we are not going to act chained anymore. You may have freed us in the dark, but we're still acting, <laughs> acting chained in the light. We are not going to do that anymore. Because we are free. You've showed us the truth. And we just want to thank you for that. Give us the boldness to go out and spread your word to the, every corner of this earth, Lord. Make heaven crowded today. Oh, give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And, oh, and in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Mm -hmm.